a Milford Haven man, born here. And my father was a trawler skipper too. And on my ship, we are all born to the sea. The mate is from Swansea, what they call a Swansea Jack. As for the bosun, he came here from Lowestoft. And the third hand came from the opposite direction, from down Devon, from Brixham. The engineer, as you would expect, is a Scotsman. And the cook, the most important member, is, like myself, from Milford Haven. Between us all, we box the compass of the four coasts, the four seas of Britain. And all come here to the Haven. It's mentioned in Shakespeare, and Nelson sang its praises. The finest harbour, everybody said, this side of the Golden Gate. The whole battle fleet could ride at anchor in the roadstead, and on its shores the dreamers have dreamt their big dreams. Brunel's Great Eastern, the biggest ship afloat berthed here once. And liners, the transatlantic run with rich passengers, that was something that happened once. Just once. They never had much time for what really counted. The fish dock, the fish market, the ice factory. They're still here. When all those great ambitions are scuppered, stranded, sunk. We work in the face of the wind. In the good days, these boats would muster a crew of twelve, and down in the fish dock you'd see on any tide a trawler fleet a hundred and fifty strong. Ask the seagulls. Now we're just a handful. Those that's left of us have to work twice as hard. And what would you expect? There's not all that many coming into the trade. I wouldn't say that we count for all that much here in Milford. There's not enough of us for a presence in the town. Yes, there have been times, oh yes, there have been times when people would put money into trawlers. But not for long. Not often. Not now. <laughs>
12, I think, when I first went to sea. I might have been a little bit younger because food rationing was still on the go. I was at school in the summer holidays, yeah. I went with my father in a ship called uh, Poet's Castle out of Swansea. Pleasuring in the August holidays. Yes, in a way, it's a wasted life. Especially since I've been married and a kid, you know. You blink and they're grown up. You, you only see them 48 hours in a month. Well, we're on the money, we're good money, but uh, well, every every trip I buy for the kids, you know, personally, so they say, gee, thanks, Dad, you know, and they come and make a fuss of me. Because other oh, 48 hours, it's the only time they see me. difference between mate and skipper to them. But when you move up, it's different again because you've got to take the ship to sea and you've got to catch it. You know, when I was mate, I used to worry about catching fish, but not that much, like, you know, because the onus wasn't on me. But then all of a sudden somebody plonks a lot on you. There's a 110-foot ship, 500-odd uh, horsepower like, six men, so much grub, so much fuel, so much ice. I want you back in 12 days with a trip of fish down here.
you learn more in that first trip. And like I say, I was mate two and a half years. But you learn more in your first trip, Skipper, than you do in your two and a half years, mate. It's not as regards manual work to everything, but you learn to weigh up the situations differently. Like. It's in your mind at sea, like, you know, you hear somebody come in, or oh, they may just made 6,000 or something, and, you know, you're struggling, and, oh, my God, what are you going to do? But, you know, you you got to make it bad and to appreciate it good and like, but you, you just hope to God that the office see it that way. Plain, just a plain cooking. Never used to do, well, I used to bake bread, but never used to do no, and tarts, but no, no fancy way. Coal fire. Stove. Some of them were good, you know, some got good ovens and good stoves and others had poor ones, they weren't all good. You know, everybody can't be top and somebody got to be bottom. But that's fishing, it's, it, I should say it's, well, it is luck. Unless you've got luck, you, you know, Whew. Well, just the ships are gone and the men have gone. Well, I think if they, even if they had more ships here now, I don't, I don't doubt whether they get the men to crew them now. And most of the jobs they going to, going to see. I know I, they say about going to see you know. I don't really like it, but for you, well, it's a job. I wouldn't come. I wouldn't stop a show to go on the door. That's all about it. You know, I, you've always been determined on that. I mean, there is times you come out of work when you've got to go on the door with you. don't want to. No, oh, I'd rather, as I am, cook deck and, you know, doing a bit of each. Ships like the engine room. You know, was right in the clean engine rooms and efficient engine room. Doesn't do that much work to keep it keep it clean and a bit tidy. You've got to live there for twelve days. So mm. See your oil levels are all right. We surround in the engine room. If you've got a constant crew, you know you work together and you've got one crew, he knows what he's got to do. And I don't believe in unions at all, so I, I don't see why I should pay a man 50 pounds a week to tell me when I, when I can work and when I can't work, or what I can do. When they first started off, I suppose the union was for the working man, but it, it's, it's the union for the union now. He, he's not worried if a working man got a crust of bread in his cupboard. ships are taken out and we put it back in.
sure that the rumors and promises and for years like you know, but uh, that's as far as it goes. Well, that's it. That's what I can't understand. The fish is on the doorstep. You want you want you want to go to steam two and a half hours. It clears the edge, and you can shoot and you can catch fish. You know. Five minutes, Skipper. All in time, Skipper. National Service was fabulous for a discipline point of view. After starting going to sea, I was 16 and a half when I started going up the ladder, so I had men under me at 16 and a half. I went third hand of a ship called the Blue Morris Castle out of Swansea, I, I believe I was 16 and a half. So I had a couple of men and I was in charge of a watch, so I had two men under me or two or three deckies under me. So I, I, I did respect, I've always respected authority and a person going up the ladder, I was lucky. I went young and I've always gone up, I've gone a little bit further each time, like. But authority, oh, you must have authority.
Basket. Well, as Milford stands at the moment, I can't do a week home, weekend home with my wife because there's only a Monday and a Wednesday market, or, or occasional Tuesday and very seldom Thursday. But from my point of view, if it could be arranged with now and again, perhaps every four trips you could have a weekend off with your wife. Not not necessary. The ship lose time. But if you could land Friday and have Saturday and Sunday and then sail Monday, like they used to in the old days, if they could go back to that that way of fishing, it would, I think it would far improve the job, in a sense, like you, you've seen a bit of life at home, because you come home like we are now, landing on a Monday in the middle of the week. There, there's no life. Like now, all right, people land the fish and it's gone up for auction on the open market. There's such a vast difference in today's market and tomorrow. But all right, this is the law of supply and demand, that I've granted. But surely there must be a way somewhere along the line where you can hit a happy medium and say for three months we'll pay you this price. And summer we'll pay you this price, winter we'll pay you this price. And Everybody knows what they're going to earn. Everybody knows what profit they're going to make or loss they're going to make instead of the law and demand and supply. Because very often the boys have come in, they've worked like hell and just take Roka. It'll drop perhaps six or eight pound a box. That's a lot of money by the law of supply and demand. My own personal feeling is every country should have its own limits and it, that country should fish in its own limits and be self-supporting. And yet, common market countries such as French and Belgium, they've they got the power in the ships, they these new, well, new ships. And we can go over the ground after them and it's a waste of time. Because they just take everything. But there, we've got to stick at it. Why? Because we are fishermen. We take the rough weather as it comes, the sea, the markets, unpredictable both. We know what we are doing. Not like some. The big beam trawlers from abroad, we know them, beamers we call them. Dragging their heavy gear down there on the sea's bottom, breaking up the muscle beds. A dust bowl they're making, if you can think of it, under the sea. Bumper catches, of course, but for how much longer? Compared with them, I suppose we're inefficient. But let me tell you, Mr. There is such a thing as being too efficient. They'll find out when they've stripped the fishing grounds what will happen then to the factory ships, the freezer ships, what happened to the liners. 
What happened to the Great Eastern? Survivors. That's what we are. Survivors. Our game takes a long time to learn. And what's in our heads didn't get there overnight. Didn't get there by correspondence course. The fishing grounds. You've got to know them. You've got to have sailed them. It's the Celtic Sea now, and the talk in Milford is all of oil, refineries, and super tankers. But you don't see all that many jobs for the locals, do you? And booms can go bust. We've seen them come and go, and proud ships sold for scrap. This is a land with a long memory, and we will still be here. Ask the seagulls. We will still be working in the face of the wind. Thank you. 